You didn't come here to see me dance. All right, that's the first time I've ever sang on the show or tried to dance. So I have thoroughly had fun. Now it's time to get down to business. Can everybody comfortably hear me? Sure you can. And get this here, giving my guests an opportunity to get ready for the second round. Checking all my levels, everything is good. Free TV is back on the air. Narc Abuse TV Network. We had our, let me do that there. We had uh, our uh, new show debut today from Hannah Speaks. That was the first thing we had this morning uh, here in California. Uh, she is in the UK. Our, our flagship show is the Coach Jess show. Uh, she comes on this Saturday at 1 p.m. California time, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. She is in Canada. So we got a show from Canada. We got a show from the UK. Uh, one dealing with resiliency and the other one dealing with domestic abuse. Uh, keep an eye out. There are more shows to come. And a lot of Zoom live shows and uh, pre-recorded shows and a whole a whole host of other things. Um, right now, let's get to our guests because we're going to delve deep into her book for a little bit. Thank you very much for supporting us and sharing this channel with others. IGTV Free TV here on Instagram. Well, you know how this goes. Less of me. More of the guests. I love those curtains. No matter how many times you show them, to me. <laughs> that's twice. twice. That has never happened before. Music. It was, it was like, nice. Well, I gotta, I gotta take my, my jump rope is over here. I gotta take it down and go exercise once the show is over with, uh, so I can take care of my COVID uh, growth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think, I don't think my stomach is supposed to touch the next door neighbor's uh, door. So what I think that's what it's been. <laughs> no, what to do? Is you check whether or not your hips are hitting the sides of the easy chair. So. <laughs> hey, that's why I've been standing up during some of these shows. <laughs> I got my chair. I sit in it, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my cheeks go like, "I don't think we need to get up." <laughs> no, <laughs> just keep feeding me them oatmeal cookies that you. you know. I had the oat, the oatmeal cream pie cookies. Uh, I just saw a recipe for it. And I, first of all, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, you know, I'm confessing. I shouldn't be just pounding those things down. And then I thought I could save money. This is how our brain works, right? I could save money because I can make them myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden I thought about it. I went like, that's going to be really kind of hard to cremate me. That's a lot of me to burn if I just keep eating stuff. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know what we're talking Okay. 
we're only here once. So <laughs> well, we're you know, buying some of those. As far as I'm concerned, the oatmeal cookies are only here once. Because once I eat them, they're gone. <laughs> once I eat them, <laughs> forget me being here once. They're <laughs> they're gone. Okay, all right, all right. So, um, a, the beautiful person you are, you decided to come back and let me torture. I mean, uh, talk with you some more. Aw, <laughs> I'm enjoying the, this. Oh, this is- thank you so much. You're so kind. Oh, hey, you know what? I gotta ask you something. Dun, yes. Dun, 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 dun. You you did it. You did it in between the little commercial break. You sent me something, and now I have to read it. I was going to wait till last, but I'm going to read it now. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it was absolutely amazing that I came across it at just that moment. Yeah, uh, Thank you for sending it to me. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to reach out and uh, get some more information about this, uh, this man by the name of Jeff Brown. Many of you may know him, uh, but thank you for sending me this post. Uh, I'm going to read this right now because it sets the tone for what we're about to do uh, in the discussion that we're going to have right now. Um, This is what it says, uh, what you sent me. It's a posting that's on Instagram from Jeff Brown Soul Shaping. So for those of you that are here, I'm looking at uh, Rebel Boutique 9. Thank you for being here. uh, uh, Narc Free Woman as well. Ebony. Uh, Julian is back. Uh, Young Joan 63. And, of, co- of course, uh, Marv is back as well. Uh, so you just sent me this uh, in between during the commercial break. And I just want to read this uh, again to set the tone for where we're going with this discussion. You can't really run away from home because you bring it with you everywhere you go. There can definitely be value in escaping to another geography to protect yourself, to breathe, to get perspective. But you will still have to go back down the path and reclaim your childhood because it is still alive in you, still dictating your relational pattern, still controlling your choices. It must be owned. It must be confronted. It must be healed. And until it is, it's still the place you live. Yeah. Why did you send me that? Because I think it's absolutely beautifully said, perfectly said. Why did you send me that? Everything, as soon as I read that first line, I knew automatically I had to send it to you because it fits so perfectly with everything I've experienced and what a lot of people in recovery will experience as they go. You cannot leave home. You can try. I tried to run from home and I took it with me. And I found that home, I found my abusers in every single relationship I had, including my friends, including my Including your friends. Friends. So, okay, if you found them in your friends and it was with you when you traveled, Mm -hmm. you you were, in essence, almost, as we all can do, creating this environment in which we didn't even, we weren't growing. We weren't really expanding and becoming a person of growth, we were putting ourselves in areas where we were stunting our growth because we really took home with us and it Mm -hmm. hadn't been, as as Jeff uh, put here, it hadn't been confronted. We hadn't really started to heal. No. You know, and even though I did counseling, I, I, I went through, oh gosh, probably, honestly, a total of 20 years of counseling, trying to, I was even... At one point, um, somebody had even, one of the psychiatrists had even said that he tested me, believe it or not, as a narcissist. And I, I was taken aback by that. I'm um, like, okay. And actually, for a while, I almost believed it. Mm. However, all of that counseling, what it didn't touch on was that one fact right there about you take it with you, you know, it, until you confront whatever is inside. I, I talk to counselors about, um, the sexual abuse. I talked to them about the belittling. I talked to them about my self-worth, but no one ever really helped me reach in and understand the past, how it happened, why it happened. They didn't help me pick apart all of the nuances and understand um, things like the confirmation bias. They didn't help me understand what an inner child was or how to play. Nobody taught me how to play. I did not know how to play until probably maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And here I am raising another boy and I didn't know how to play. I do now, 
I don't even gaming. <laughs> so. Uh, oh wait, man, you didn't tell me that. Okay, we did yeah. show prep. You didn't tell me you were gaming. Oh man. Okay, that I, I don't. Hey, I don't even do that because I'm I'm afraid that I may break something. But <laughs> you're gaming now. Okay. I die I have, and I stop. I just go. Okay, whatever. Yeah, and, but it's still fun. But it's still fun. Because it is. okay, realistically, I'm reading your book. Okay, I don't know if everybody can see that there. I'm reading your book, and. This woman doesn't know how to play. No, she, she, she's the the little girl is not even getting a chance to just play. I, I mean, I, I didn't. I'm glad you brought it up because I I saw that I was as you know I'm I'm reading it and I'm going, wow. No, I didn't. Where was the little girl? It was taken from you. Somebody no. mismanaged you and took it from you. Mm hmm. I was turned into an adult before, you know, there's an expression that you run before you walk many times. And I was already running. I knew how to run before I ever knew how to walk. I did not learn how to walk until this part of my life, this part of my journey. Um, and, and what that means to me is that, you know, I didn't, yes, I had Barbies, but you know, when I played with my Barbies, I played kiss and, and adult, adult game, yeah, adult thing. Yeah. Things that, Ken and Barbie were always kissing and always doing those things. Um, my brother and I would, would ride our bikes, but even then we would get in trouble for going places. We weren't, we were always in trouble. It seemed like, um, and of course punishment was usually form of sexual abuse. Um, but no, I didn't play. I, I tried girl scouts, but I was always really awkward at it. I was awkward as a girl. I never felt like a little girl and I didn't know what it felt like to be a little girl. Um, and just the other day I let the little girl come out because I saw a coloring book that really, really awesome. So I bought uh -oh. myself. <laughs> so I, I have, we have coloring sessions now where we sit and we talk and we color. Um, you know, I, I love I, that. I love that. I love that. I want to dance. Um, I, I I just am me now. I'm discovering and exploring me at, at my age, and that's okay. It doesn't matter what age you do it. I don't care if you're 15, 16, 89. Yeah. You have to play. You have to explore that inner child. Yeah. And that inner child, the wounded one, until they feel safe, until they feel safe deep inside of you, you're always going to have those relationship issues. You're always going to default back to your behaviors and your thoughts and your beliefs about yourself that you had as a child. And, and mm -hmm. co confronting those is something you chose to do. Yes. But again, just for those who may not know this and didn't watch the first segment yet, we're only talking a couple of years in now, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you mentioned that yeah. you're 61. You said that in the first segment. Yeah, I started, my journey actually started about six months after my husband passed. And, you know, of course, bits and pieces of it had started before then. But I hit a point, as my coach called it, because my coach, former coach wrote the forward. But there's a threshold that I hit. Um, it's an emotional threshold. And it's like he wrote, you have two choices. You can pick yourself up and keep going and discover or you can quit. And I tried to quit. I tried to take my life after my husband had passed because I felt worthless. I felt like I was no good. I was too old. I was too fat. I was never, I, I, I just, I was right back to where I was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, and it was grief and I didn't recognize it as grief. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point I decided when I got really angry with myself, which was my first indication that I had some hope because I felt anger with myself for not even being able to cry. I couldn't cry. I was that dry. So I just started scrolling and I started looking and one thing led to another and I wound up in a wonderful um, community of like-minded people, people who were also searching for things. And I didn't know what I was searching for. I just knew I wanted to feel good about something about myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was a widow raising a grandson, facing financial difficulties like crazy and feeling very, very alone. And when you get to that point, it's hard to describe what happens in a person's mind, but you just decide 
that's it. I'm done. When you got and, to the, when you got to the I'm done part, mm-hmm. do you feel that it was generated by anger, uh, the loss of your mate, the sexual abuse uh, from your father, and running away at sixteen? Was it some of the abuse uh, that piled up on you? Uh, when you were young and got pregnant and then were forced to have to marry someone, did that generate it or was there something else? I'm just curious to ask for others that may go through this and it may be something triggering, excuse me, opening up the door for them. That, you know, I do believe honestly, it was just a culmination. It, it was a culmination of combination of despair. Okay. Below hopelessness. It's hopelessness is even above where you get and you'll, you know, that feeling a lot of people, many of us have the thought of, you know what, I'll just quit. I I'm just, and you get thoughts of suicide. Many people do. And there is no shame in that. No shame at all. It's, it's something we all do. However, you'll know when you get to that point and when you do, there is, um, there's a, there's an, it's not even anger. There's just a feeling that's deep down inside of you that just says, I don't want to do this. Not one second more. I I'm, you're beyond done. So, you know, what should somebody do in that position? Well, what I did, I got mad and I threw my phone and then I went back and picked up my phone because I was mad. Yeah. And, I just started scrolling mindlessly and I hit Instagram and I remember now what I was looking for. I was looking for um, the suicide hotline number and I got really irritated because the person, um, you know, referred me on to somebody else. I'm like, are you kidding me? Wow. (laughs) This is not good. And, And so that made me mad too. And I, and I got at that point, I do remember yelling out in that my bedroom, telling my husband, you know, he wasn't alive, but in, Yes, of course. No, that's understandable. Yeah. yeah, it's like, seriously, you're not even going to let me do this. You know, <laughs> it's like, can you just please give me a break? And then I just found the page for the community that I later joined. Um, when somebody does get to that point, mm-hmm. there is always an ounce of hope because we're still thinking about it. We haven't actually taken action. Bank on that little ounce, that, that second thought that you have. And keep going with that second thought. There are days still, I mean, admittedly, there's days still when the depression still gets on top of me, um, but I don't let it overcome me. I acknowledge it. I feel it. And I let it just sit with me for a day, sometimes two days. And then when I recognized at one point a few months ago that it was going beyond a few days, then I reached out to my very dear chosen family members that I I have had the beautiful experience of knowing and bringing into my life. I reached out to them and I'm like, guys, I'm not doing so well. You know, I'm struggling here. I don't know what this is. And, you know, we worked through a lot of it. It turned out it was mild depression. And so I knew what to do then. I knew to get busy, get active, start moving, start doing things that were taking care of me again. Yeah. Um, Because if we don't, if we don't reach out, if we don't reach out to at least one person and say that I'm really struggling without shame, Mm -hmm. and even if there's shame there, it's okay. Because that shame will leave. It does leave. So why I said that is because Home will always be with me. Those memories are always going to be with me. Mm-hmm. Trauma recovery, I got to tell you this. A lot of people think that once you're in recovery, that it's going to magically erase all the past. Your past, you can't run from it. You can't erase it. We can't take a pill and make it go away. But what we can do is we can change the way we believe about it. We can change our thoughts about it. We can learn to understand why what happened happened, what happened, how it happened. And when we start to understand all those things, we actually start to develop an opinion, a truthful opinion about ourselves. And that truthful opinion is, wow, I'm pretty damn awesome. <laughs> I have a lot of money. You know, you yeah, can 
about all the good things that you've got going on in your life instead of focusing on the negative. And we need to run toward that truthful opinion instead of trying to always downplay it, right? That yes. we are we are indeed wonderfully made and we are not an accident. Uh that that we have a purpose and it's not always connected to our our biological or ge- genealogical uh family or community tribe that we came from that we may have a purpose they may all live in uh, California and we may, our purpose may be in the UK. Uh, yeah. But if if we're not careful, we're staying too close to home and we need to grow. But the the abuse, the abuse mm-hmm. of people that cross your path share responsibility for the abuse that they did. But you took responsibility or accountability for growing and moving outside of the pattern or condition uh, that you were accustomed to living, that you took with you as you went. You decided to do something about that and not really focus so much energy and attention and your emotions on the abuse of people. Now, that's not hard. Excuse me. Let me rephrase that. That's hard for some people to adjust to and do. Yes, your, it is. Your words of advice then. Okay. Bashing is not going to get anybody anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you right now. I, I hear it, and I used to do this. I used to, oh, that S.O., you know, I used to bash my ex like, oh, like people butter bread. But <laughs> okay. all I do, I know, I have so many Hey, wait, 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 hold on. Hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're in the same age group. We, we're going to have a conversation. All the young people going to just start dropping because they don't know, what are the old people talking about? But that's okay. <laughs> I don't care if everybody drop off. I love all of you guys, but it'd just be you and me. I understand what you meant by that. I know that expression. We well, go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, oh, hey, oh, old folks taking over right now. You young folks sit down, listen to this. Go ahead. Get, get yourself a tweak. Get yourself a tweaky and sit down. We well, go ahead. There, there you go. Oatmeal talk. Oatmeal, 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 oatmeal. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Get some oatmeal cookies. So, you know, I mean, bashing. It <laughs> might feel good momentarily. Of course it does. You know, it makes us feel better about who we are. But in all honesty, what we're doing is we're really, we're doing a lot of things to ourselves in that moment. For one, we're perpetuating that anger. We're perpetuating that feeling of uh, frustration, aggravation, annoyance. And we're just, we're darkening all of our feelings inside of ourselves. Um, We're slowing our growth. But instead, if we flip that script and we actually start looking at everything that we gained from it and everything that we can, we can actually serve more justice because nobody, I'm not going to say nobody. It's harder to get people to listen to an angry person about how to effectively make change. People aren't really, how many of you really want to listen to somebody beating on the podium and shaking their fist and, you know, rah, 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 rah. whereas if you talk to somebody with reason, talk to somebody in a positive manner, they're going to be more inclined to step up and make a change than they are somebody who is browbeating others. So anger isn't all that effective. At least it hasn't been for me. And I haven't really been inclined to follow anybody that wants to bash constantly. I would much rather listen to somebody who has a sense of balance and has a sense of integrity and character because there's a whole lot more truth that comes from somebody who is less angry and more positive than somebody who is so ready to bash and cut others down. And what that comes to for me is compassion and understanding. And if you hold compassion and understanding for yourself, oh, I know this is going to make some people cringe. You can actually radically accept that the, your abuser was actually a real person who had their own story and was 99% of the times point nine percent nine 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 abused as well. They just have unaddressed needs. Now, does that mean that you accept what they did? No. But you're also most times not going to get justice. You can't. It's hard to prosecute a narcissist. It's extremely hard to prosecute a sexual abuser. I I know that from experience. I tried. And magically, the interview tapes of my children, 
um, never made it to the court. So they got their day in court, but I have found justice in how I live my life Hmm. in my children are recovering. I got four grown adult children solidly in recovery. And now, I mean, they are flourishing and they're raising children and we are stopping generational trauma through positive living, compassion and understanding, learning to love ourselves, learning to trust ourselves. That is justice. Within within the parameters of, of what you've done, within that whole sphere of what you've put together, that look, that bubble, I hate to put it that way. I was trying to think of a different word as I was saying this. Uh, I'm just going to call it a bubble then. This bubble of justice and compassion and what you've created to to bring an end to what has happened to you and to your children, the abuse. Was it hard to make boundaries? Oh, yeah. Um, boundaries was a foreign word to me. And it was foreign to my children. Um I didn't even have boundaries when I met my late husband and I didn't have boundaries up until a couple of years ago. Um, boundaries were, is not a part of the, the abusive lifestyle. It truly is not. So and, trying and, to, and that was your lifestyle. If anybody, uh, just for the sake of the record, you had an abusive lifestyle. If you guys don't believe me, you got to get the book, get the book and you will see, why she's uh, share is highlighting what she's saying right now. Go ahead, please. There, there are no boundaries. You, they're not even a part of your, your comprehension. Anything goes and it's all for survival. You know, our first instinct is to save our life. So if laying down and giving somebody what they want is going to save your life, then that's what you And you, and you mean literally, uh, just, just so the audience understands, uh, again, if you read the book, you mean literally just giving mm-hmm. them what they want, even if you don't want to give it to them, you believe giving your body is going to save your life. Yeah, then you do it. You do it. And, you know, for so many years, I carried <sighs> shame. I don't see it. it. It's a secondary emotion, but I carried shame so deeply and so in, in, internalized um, that it came out in everything that I did. Where I thought I was being a good person, um, you know, by serving others, by by over serving, overextending myself, and giving everything everybody wanted, no boundaries. Um, I, I was actually doing myself so much harm. Um, it's taken a it, it's taken a lot to, to undo everything, yeah. but it's also exciting because I am creating um, from scratch. I'm creating myself from scratch. So you are. And I, and, and now we get to this point of the show, in which uh, I knew was going to happen, in which I'm struggling as to I'm, we've gone 28 minutes and I could keep talking because you, you're mentioning things I want to I want to talk about. But okay. uh, I do want to highlight uh, this part of the book. Uh, I am semi stuttering and filtering myself because I'm, I'm deciding what I want to do here. Okay. I do want to I do want to ask you this. When it came to you deciding, at some point you had to decide. You had to recognize, confirm all the different words we could think of. But you decided because you knew for a fact that you were a good woman. Mm. When, what year did that happen? Oh, that would have been... What is this, 2021? That would have been um, late 2020? No, late 2019. If Marvin was in here, he could probably tell you. <laughs> <laughs> About two years ago, honestly, I was working with, um, who is my still now mentor. Um, and I was in a particular session. And this mentor had worked and worked and worked trying to come from every perspective to get me to understand that I was born good. (laughs) And it finally occurred. I I wrote it in my book, but it finally occurred during a conversation we were having. 
And the point he was trying to make was, I need you to say you are, I need you to see you are a good person. All right. I can stop the show now. I was going to try to get you to do it, but he already did it. So that's all right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's a very valid point. I was, this is where I was going. I didn't know you were going to say this right now, but go ahead. Seriously. And, and um, there's. <sighs> Please don't pick the page that I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to. Guys, going okay, to if, if you're first time passing through, my shows are not scripted. Uh, they're no, pla they're okay. planned. But but I, I, I don't know exactly from memory. But this person, I had looked at this. I, I looked at the screen, and I was looking at myself, and I started to cry. And I, I could feel feelings going through my body. There was there was as I wrote it. There was like an electric, and it was warm, and it was moving through me. And I started, I really started to cry as I looked at myself, just like I'm looking right now. Yeah, and I was looking yeah. at my eyes. And he, he got really excited and he's like, ah, there it is. Yeah, they he got you. He goes like, I got you. You believe in now that you're a good woman. Yeah, yeah. And then and then he's like, there it is. He's like, you like yourself. And it's you like, <laughs> I was going to say that. I do. It's like, you I like yourself. Yeah. And but when I got to that point, of knowing that I liked myself, cool. then I really see, well, if I like myself, then I've got to be good by default. How can you like something that is not good? Not going to happen. No. Unless you're, uh, wait, <laughs> unless you're a really awful person, unless you're a really awful person that you like bad. Yeah, I, I could not argue the fact. It's like, okay, well, if, you know, because I'm a logical person, so it makes sense. Right. And that was one of the other things. I have lived on logic. I have lived on a, a, a twisted logic, but I've always lived with my wits, nothing emotional, not my feeling, not my gut. I never listened to my intuition. I was classic red flag misser. Somebody could be waving it in front of me and I'm missing it going, Oh, I don't know where it is. Wow. That's, you I'm know, that, that, that part of you, it was actually touched on much earlier. Uh, the pack coach said a statement much earlier that your uh, intuition sometimes can be tucked away. It, it, but yet it, it screams, uh, you know, for the last time, as it were, it, it cries out to us. In yeah. essence, is what she was saying. Correct me, uh, uh, back coach, if I said it the wrong way. But as a woman, you saw yourself one way through your wits, through your logic, which was really your survival skill uh, with yep. your your handlers or your the pimps and, and the, the men that uh, you came across and your dad and others. But the reality of it is when you when you work with you work with that coach that was working with you then. What do you say? 2019, you were able to really see yourself finally as a yeah. good person, as a good woman, or as everyone yeah. here is saying, you're a beautiful woman, a strong woman. All those other things now start to come out because the blockage is not there. Right. You know what oh, the hardest thing for me to say? What's that? I am a good woman, yes, and I do love myself, but it is extremely difficult. Still, I'm still doing mirror work on this, to look in the mirror and tell myself that I am a beautiful woman. Okay. That, you, 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 I still you. haven't got there. Okay, Tim, look, 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 look up here. You see this? I ain't got no hair. If I could trade you the hair you got on your head, and the, <laughs> look, look, these cheeks, these cheeks need some work. Can I have your cheeks? Because they look more full of life than mine, you know? Look at the <laughs> smile that you have. Contagious. And, but it is your it is your eyes that tell the true story that yes. that that emotionally you've gone through stuff, but you're not emotionally tired or dead. You're no. still kicking and our yeah. eyes carry our emotion. And, you yes. know, and then I, I, look, I got to get to the book now. You may have an excerpt that you want to read. That's fine. Okay. But, oh, I got to read something to you. Uh, what's on the screen? There's a, a lot that has uh, come across the screen. Hello to everyone that is passing through normally. In the show, I acknowledge and bring in the audience quite a bit. Uh, I only have a little bit of time with her today. We've gone 34 minutes. We're going to talk about the book a little bit. I have not tried to ignore you. Uh, thank you, Anne, for all the love. Anne is showing that she's crying uh, from you sharing your experience. Um, I, I have to read some things here. I've okay. gone to page. I'm going to give you a heads up because you have the book. Um, okay. The uh, Page 96 and 97 is where I am right now. So okay. this is what I pulled up, and then you started talking about this. Ah. The chapter is entitled, I Am a Good Woman. Yes. And, and in this chapter, uh, you mentioned, of course, a number of different things. I'm going to pull out a few, and then you can talk about it a little bit before we have to go. 
But in that chapter on page 96, you write this. How many red flags have to drop before I get it? That's your message to yourself you're writing, correct? Yep. Why? All of these- Why? Because the um, I, I wrote that on that quote specifically because at that time of life, I, number one, didn't know what a red flag was. And I didn't know how to listen to my intuition. And as I was going through and writing my story, those red flags, I went back in and inserted intentionally when I was going through my 100 days of intent, trying to feel. And then I started, I recognized, holy cow, look at all of these red flags that are present now. And now that I'm aware of those red flags, I know what to look for in any kind of future relationship. Um, so so that's, that was specifically why I wrote that in there, because I was really, I was embarrassed at myself reading that story when i went back and reread it i was embarrassed that i missed many times as well as it goes back to the post that i made today why did not stay yeah why did you stay how could you not miss how could you miss these red flags and all those number of things started to come back to you Say yeah, that because again. because of the beliefs in ourselves we believe that we are not worth more we believe yeah. that we are so unworthy that yeah. this is as good as it gets Without so, that, I'm just going to say hogwash. It's yeah. not as good as it gets. It gets yeah. better. Yeah. And we don't have to settle. Uh, we no. don't have to settle for red flags. We don't have to settle. Even if we chose to, to follow the red flag and if we decide that it is not the direction we go in, uh, we don't have to beat ourselves over that. Matter of fact, I have, to read, I have to read a couple of points here. Everybody, feel free to take note of uh, page 97. Uh, if you've already got a copy, by all means, get it uh they can get an amazon right or bar- they can get it anywhere on barnes and noble google books um pretty much anywhere online that you can order book okay all right so this is this is part of the life that you had before and uh, you wrote about it and you wrote this uh sadly i needed to belong to someone anyone uh, i wasn't aware at the time i was flirting with him but it was a pattern that i would repeat several more times in my life lacking love self-love and self-worth i sought anyone who would offer me the time of day and allow me to feel some value even if that value was for sex so when you wrote that remembering your life that you had lacking love -love, self-love self-worth you had to come to some recognition that these things were missing yeah how did you start to fill the void of lacking love, self-love, and self-worth? What techniques and tools have you experienced to rebound from an experience like that that's highlighted in the book? First off, understanding, um, going through that exercise, defining that I am a good person. Um, that was actually done through um, a process of inner work, a lot of journaling, heavy journaling with answering deep introspective questions, a lot of co-regulation. Um, and that is, that was um, sharing my story and my belief in a safe community, a safe container, okay. um, as well as there was a lot of breath work that was involved at the time. Um, there was mirror work and um, exercises like going through the Ho'oponopono prayer. And I can't ever say that word. It's really hard to say. But, um, but, you, but you went through a number of different exercises and y- you took it upon yourself to, to, as it were, according to what you wrote here on page 97, you were lacking love, self-love and self-worth. This is that part that I find very encouraging from you. You decided to self-generate the necessary steps to fill that void. I had to fill the void of the love that I didn't receive as a child. I, you know, I mean, I had no love. And so, yeah, I had to generate that love. But where I generated from, honestly, was coming from that love of the inner child, that love of little tiny me, little small me, and then also recognizing, okay, wait, I really do love that little girl. 
and what I was feeling. And then when I went back and reread the letters to my grandparents and I started recognizing the people in my life that did love me when they were alive. And then I discovered that the people who love me now, my chosen family, they started showing me in various ways what love is. And the more I started to see what love is and open my eyes and my awareness to it, the more I started to feel it. And then the more I started to open up my heart space. Because, because, well, you didn't see yourself as a good woman. You didn't see no. yourself as a good daughter. You didn't see yourself no, as a, a good student, as you, as you were kind of highlighting in the first segment, first episode. No. It, it, we're talking a long list of stuff that you were just felt, I'm not fitting into this whole life thing the right way. Something must be wrong with me because you experienced this. You, you write this, for example. You say, my pimp, or keeper, as I called him, wasn't mm-hmm. thrilled about this idea, uh, less than pleased, He had tried a few tricks to convince me I was making a mistake, including letting me know he could find me and reach me anytime, anywhere. And he did. He did. He did. He reached Uh, out to me a couple of times. And in all honesty, not on, I don't like that statement in all honesty, in retrospect, there were a couple of times he actually mentioned. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Something's happening. I hope I didn't. No, no, we're just, we'll give it a second. Let it catch up. Did okay. you say that again, please? Repeat that. He, that. he actually showed me compassion um, oh. in several times, checking in on me, checking in on my welfare, my well-being, especially while I was pregnant. Um, so in a twisted way, he, he was trying to show me his form of love as well. Um, but how did I come to self-love for myself through inner child work? Um, through shadow work. There was a lot of shadow work. There's a lot of different processes. Um, There's shadow work. There's inner child work. There are some tools. Um, There's that co-regulation, that talk therapy, some of it, but the rest of it was just all reconnecting the mind to the body and actually accepting that I have value and I have worth. And through journaling, discovering my worth. Now, there was an interesting... There was an interesting post that I made, and this is one of my most tender stories that I didn't share in here. But shortly um, after my husband and I started dating, my late husband, I had he discovered a list, and I had this list of 80 different characteristics and traits that I wanted my future husband to have. I'm sorry. No, you got to stop. You got to stop. Did you say eight or 80? 80. You had eight. You had 80. I had 80 characteristics that my future husband was going to have. I, I, I like you, Cher, but how'd you come up with 80? I don't, I don't, I don't, think, my, I don't think my daughter should listen to this show. They're going to forever be single. So, so, no, that's up to them, of course. I'll tell 80, you what. You, you had 80. I that's, had 80. You need, I a, had, you need an e-book and put the 80 in there for women to have. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to uncover that list, but he found this list, and we were talking about my self-worth and my self-esteem and he knew that um, I was really struggling in that area. And to make a long story short, what he had said was, you know, he said, I I just really want you to see everything that I see in you. And it's like, well, yeah, but the, the, this is, this is you, this list is you, you are so much better than me. And he told me was, you know, that everything that was on that list was everything that he already saw in me. So, yeah. So I, I hang on to that story. I hang on because he was right. Everything that I listed that I wanted him was already in me. I just needed to recognize it. So if people really want a powerful tool, start writing out, even if it's just nonsense, start writing out everything you like. Maybe it's the shape of your nails. Maybe it's your favorite color. Maybe it's the way your eyes or the way your hair looks. It doesn't matter. Maybe you've got a special freckle that you really like, which you do. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, really? Right. Oh, really? Show it to us over and over. Just keep showing. <laughs> there you go. Be proud of the things we like, but make a list of them so we can keep repeating it over and over. Right? Make a list of them and be proud of them. Exactly. See. Wow. 
there's something I do. I want to share this with you. Okay. Please. Can I? Okay. It's my turn. All right. If you look on page 202, maybe you yeah. already marked. Nope. 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 Okay. Didn't mark 202. But okay. Let me get there. All right. Go to ahead. All right. To show, to illustrate the difference of where I was when I wrote this book, where I came from before I started, okay. where I, I was when I wrote the book and where I am at this present moment. It takes compassion and understanding to appreciate what we see inside us. So now if you go over to page 203, I did not fully appreciate when I was writing this book, I didn't have half the appreciation that I have right now. Mm -hmm. But So on 203, I started it out with maybe the right questions are going through my timeline will show me specific points of my rise, like the lotus that pushes through the murky, muddy waters to unfold and stand tall in the sunlight each morning. It started slow, but then after a few weeks, the shedding of layer after layer of old patterns began. And as each layer fell away, I felt better. Wow. And it happens every day. Inner work is not just a once a week thing. This recovery process, it's not a once a week thing. Recovery is daily. And as you stay at it daily, you grow daily, you grow exponentially. You never take a step back because I'm telling you what, once you start, once you're aware, I wrote that yesterday, once you're aware, you can't go back. You cannot go back. It's, it's almost impossible. Yes, you can slide back and yes, you can make some mistakes. But once you have that awareness, it never leaves you. Once you're aware that you've got boundaries, that you have choices, that you have worth your worth can't disappear. It just can't. You have uh, set the tone and the bar pretty high for everybody that's going to be a guest after today. I don't know. I may start getting people start canceling. You know, I'm, I'm like booked all the way into December or so. And I'm looking at uh, this is going to create a problem, man. Hey, you, man what, are you, what are you doing to my show here? Free TV. You're going to make me have to start charging people to watch it for free and instead of free. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Not as, as ne that's never going to happen. Uh, but um, you got Ann. Ann is saying, I need to know the whole 80. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, you better, you, better, you, you better do it. You better get that list out. Now. Wait, I got one better than that. Okay. You, need, you need to have eight different shirts with 10, only 10 of the 80 on each one. Oh, there you go. Eight Please. shirts, but you they have to buy all eight to have all the eighty. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. And, and and you can you can call that line of clothing uh you can call it you can call it the unbound collection. Oh, there you go. I love that title. You can call Thank it the you. unbound collection. And but that go, go ahead. Go ahead. That was my market that's my marketing gift to you today. That's the only thing that pops into my head. Well, go ahead. My mentor gave me the title Unbound. He, he likes oh, really? to, with every one of his students, he, he really likes to give them a name that he feels fits them. And he, as he expressed it, he watched me unbind myself from wow. everything that was in my past, everything that I was carrying. So he's like, you are share unbound. And it has yeah. stayed. It fits so beautifully. And um, oh. so, yeah. You, That's you, where that came from. Look at what we're doing here. You know, you, you start this. You're gonna have the, you're gonna have the the unbound uh, team, or I don't know what you're gonna call it. Community. You have this unbound community in which everyone is gonna uh, unbind themselves from the things that hold them down, that weigh them down emotionally, <laughs> mentally, spiritually, and physically. They're gonna make incremental what growth and and what did you yeah. say like like the lotus you you highlighted that you just read it to us right now oh, um goodness. wow I even a story in there about um dandelion i hope i don't know if you got there or not but there is a portion right. of my a little a little fantasy story that i wrote because i love creative writing and um it's a story of dandelion she is a dandelion oh okay got it got it got that's it. the significance of the dandelion oh. is because of that story that's in the back of the book. Okay, um, but cool. dandelion is, um, she, she is very ashamed of being a dandelion. Okay. The local 
the, the weeds and lotus, um, of course, is, you know, the great queen of the pond. So, you know, I love the expression lotus warrior because a lotus actually will stay dormant in the mud until it has the right amount of sunlight to push up through the water and it actually pushes through the mud. It can lay dormant for a thousand years until it pushes through Whoa. the mud. Whoa. Years, one seed, a thousand years. It will actually push through the mud. There'll be no mud on its petals. It will be perfectly impeccably clean as wow. though it washed. And then it folds up at night. When the moon comes out, the sun goes down, the moon comes up, petals fold in and it goes right back down into the mud. And then when the sun is right again at its appropriate time, it will push through the mud and yep. look clean as if. Yes. What are you doing to my show, woman? What are you out of your mind? You just, I have to go and I want to ask you questions again. That is OK. That's pretty deep. I'm going to. Yeah. Me and my daughter is going to have to talk about that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Because Look essentially up. that is what many people are going through. Feeling yes. as if they not only are stuck, per se, trapped in mud, yes. emotional mud, mm -hmm. but literally, like you're saying, right, the lotus? Literally, they can push up through the mud, through the muck, and come out clean, where there's no shame. I love it. No there's shame. No there you go. Wait. Yeah. And, 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 and recognize the people that try to perpetrate that same shame on them yep. and get away from that you know, that bad association or people that make them feel that way and not feel shame for getting away from people who try to make you feel shameful. Uh, I, I, I got some of that out of this book. I got different things that you wrote in your book. Yeah. You can write some of it. Guys, get the book, please. Please do yourself a favor. Put the pizza down. Okay. Put the burgers down. Spin it on the book. Uh, they can get the book anywhere, right? Right. Anywhere. Print or version. Yeah. All right. Look, uh, I have enjoyed okay. myself. <laughs> this so is crazy. It's been wonderful. Uh, I, I get I get that. Uh, Coach Deb is here, and I, I think that's funny. She says, I'll drive a Lotus car super fast through the mud. Uh, so <laughs> so that, that is, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, Deb, you know I love you, Deb. She, she, she's a good person. She's been on the show a number of times. That That's pretty funny. Uh, from somebody who sells cars. Uh, well, I take that back. She doesn't sell cars. She she beats the men that sell the cars. She's, a, she's in charge of people. Um, uh, great Dane mom here and Crosby here and is laughing from what we said earlier. Again, Anne does say she wants the list of 80 things that you, uh, listed for your prospective future mate. So, I, so 80, I, I cannot be, believe you wrote. I am, that'll be tomorrow's post. Okay. I want to see the 80, but I'm telling you, okay, my marketing, my marketing gift, uh, you know, I, I don't have the best marketing background. It, it does work sometimes, but I'm telling you eight shirts. 10 things that a woman should want from a man. Eight shirts that don't equal 80. You know, 19.99, 44.99. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I like you know? it. I All like right. it. Anyhow, um, thank you so much for doing this today. I've had so much fun. Um, and thank you for, you know, getting me to tear up that I had to take a commercial break and get my tears out before we came back because you know you I got know. you got me in the first segment. I was just trying to be I was trying to be somewhat, you know, host cool. <laughs> and to, uh, even though I do cry on this show. Uh, thank you, everyone else that has been here. I am uh, going to tell you we are going to be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have Kim Saeed here. Uh, and then on Saturday we're going to have uh, Coach Jess. Her show will be back on the air. We took a couple of weeks off. Uh, and she will be back uh, tomorrow, sorry, rather Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And uh, East Coast time, she will be here at 4 o'clock. Uh, again, tomorrow will be Kim Saeed. It is a three-part series. Uh, we will be breaking down a number of things. Uh, you just have to come in and hear it. Uh, we have some things in mind for you uh, that you will benefit from if you have to deal uh, with a narcissist and uh, toxic behavior. Today, two parts, two episodes. Today, I did with you. Uh, I could easily do three. Uh, but uh, everybody, please get the book. Please share. Tell them the book again, please. Okay. It is Unbound, 100 Days of Intent. There we go. And you can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Those are the two predominant ones. It comes in print or ebook form. Yes. Please make sure to support my guest. 
follow my guests, uh, and without a doubt, follow the people that follow me, uh, if you so choose to. Uh, all of my guests are legends uh, as far as uh, my daughters and I are concerned when we put this channel together because individuals like you, Cher, and others that are on, Kim Sae, tomorrow, and others, uh, you come on to help people. Uh, it's sad to say we do get people that tell us they don't want to be on the show because we don't have enough followers. Uh, we've gotten that quite a bit over the past year. But uh, we are so happy with the ones that were willing to come on and help the audience and be here. Uh, Anne is saying thank you. Uh, uh, thank you both. Thank you, Anne. That is sweet. Anne also says thank you so much. You're a wonderful lady. Uh, and that's, uh, that's big. And uh, thank you, uh, Coach Deb, for the hug. You got so much that was happening. Uh, I love all of you. I'm not ignoring anybody. It's just that I had to, I had to get to this book and talk with this beautiful lady. Uh, thank you for sending me a copy of the book. It is a good read. Uh, and you're getting a heart, too, from, uh, I believe that says Annette Lowe. Uh, hopefully I said that correctly. All right, we got to go. Uh, thank thank you, you so much. Uh, you take care of yourself. Be safe in Texas because you know you gave me a scare. What, what was that? Just a few days ago. Yeah, with, uh, the, with the weather. And then you reached out to me. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah, be careful with that. I made it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being a beautiful, lovely woman. Uh, you are beautiful to this show and all of the audience, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Everybody, take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.